and you were in a different brokerage. Uh, you were in like a smaller brokerage before you made the switch. In the last brokerage, what you made in 11 months, you made that in two months after you made the switch. That's like incredible. That like gave me goosebumps. And, oh wait, there's more. I'm pulling it up here. Within the last six months, your GCI has been over $80,000. That is, Girl. yeah, dude. Like you went from- This is the Be More Show for Agents where you'll find real talk, <laughs> talk and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We wanna know what killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it, all tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. This, this is, is live, live Karina. <laughs> it's not really live. This is recording. <laughs> but we are live. Welcome. Yes. Welcome, Karina. <laughs> welcome to the Be More Show for Agents. What's up, guys? Today we have Karina Albalize. You are from Tucson, Arizona. Dude, thank you so much for joining us. I want to say a quick story before I jump into your stats. And then before we jump into the rest of the questions, uh, you and I met. Can I tell this story? I think you know what I'm going to say. Yes, <laughs> how we, you can. How we met. <laughs> the Airbnb. <laughs> oh, no, seriously. Do okay, I, I don't, I'm, I'm excited. I'm embarrassed. What's the story? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I invest in properties. Obviously, I have a couple in Tucson. And one of them was an Airbnb. And I received, well, Airbnb, but also VRBO. I received a request on Verbo for um, a family to book it out for a couple months. And it was Karina and her family. So while they're <laughs> waiting for like to purchase another property, and this is like in the, in the beginning of COVID, I think it was. Anyway, that doesn't matter. The point is <laughs> one day they're a great, like they are probably one of my favorite tenants and, or like guests, whatever. Um, one day I get a call and it's from uh, Karina's mom. And she goes, Allie, your house is on fire. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, <clears throat> what? And she is crying. She's like sobbing. She it feels so, so bad. I was like, what happened? I was like, call for like call 911, get the emergency department out there, like the fire department, call everybody, FBI, SWAT team, <laughs> let's go. And <laughs> so I ended up going out there and it actually wasn't that big of a fire. 911 or the fire department did not need to be called, luckily. Um, but she was cooking and left like beans on the stove and like walked Typical out because she was also grilling on the outside. <laughs> 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 and it was so funny. Um, so I went over there thinking the worst, you know, I'm, I, as I'm driving down there, I'm like, my house burnt down. At least I have insurance, you know, whatever house is going to play out. Who do I need to call? And I got there and the house is fine. I mean, it was just the kitchen. It was a, it was a kitchen fire. I have some photos on my Instagram. <laughs> and then if you continue swiping, <laughs> if you continue swiping, they invited me to dinner. They were like, the least we can do is give you the dinner. And I was like, Hell yeah, that it was good. <laughs> that dinner was good. But that is how we like met. So I thought that oh was so God. funny. <laughs> Dude, where she, Karina, were you an agent? At no, that time? not at all. Okay. Pre-agent. Pre okay. So, well, I'm, I'm super curious then like you, and this is too soon, but I want to know. So when did you decide to get your license? Like, was it because of this Airbnb experience that you had with this magical host? You were like, real estate's for me. Not at all. So before real estate, straight out of high school, I was a CNA. So I was in healthcare. I did that for seven years. I absolutely loved it. I loved helping people. And I think that uh, that's kind of why I was ready to help people, but like in a different way. Um, and I was starting to like shift my focus because I was going to school to be a nurse and I was like, I really want to help people. And, and I, I, I don't know, I'm a caring person, I would say. And so I finally was like, you know what? I think I want to do something in business. Like my dad got his bachelor's in business and like, I just have people in my family who, who are, have had their own business and including my dad. So I was like, I kind of, I think I want to go that route. And so then I started like, uh, taking classes uh, to get my bachelor's uh, in business administration. And then at that point, I was like, I want to do real estate like during that time. And I said, well, I actually don't need uh, to go to school to be a realtor. So I literally finished out my classes. I stopped and then I started real estate school at Hogan and here in Tucson. So I, I did that. And while I was working, I uh, when I was a CNA, 
I started doing home health. So like while I was doing home health, I would have clients that I w- would work 12 hour shifts with and they didn't care that I was going to school to be a realtor. They're like, that's so different, but they would support me. Like I was there to take care of them. And they're like, do your homework. And I'm like, no, I'm here to take care of you. <laughs> so, so I did that. And then uh, I met Allie obviously through her uh, rental that my mom almost burnt down. Um, And then I found out that Allie was also going to school to be a realtor, but I didn't find out until I finished. And then like she started uh, with you guys with EXP and five pillars. And then I noticed that she became a realtor and I was like, holy smokes. And so that's kind of just how like we hit it off. Um, And then one time, Allie, I don't know if you remember, but we had coffee at your rental. And like, we, we talked and we told each other like our stories, like our, our coming out story to our parents and we kind of like connected there and then we just stayed in touch. And then like one day, I I can't remember who like reached out or I think Allie requested me on Facebook and then it it just went from there. That's uh, so that's our little story there. Yeah. Yeah. And you were in a different brokerage. Uh, You were in like a smaller brokerage before you made the switch. Um, And I want to go over your stats because once you made the switch, I want to toot your horn because damn, you capped in six months, right? Was it six six? months or was it five, six months? Uh, and how many transactions with that? Do you, do you know how many transactions that was? It took me about 12 transactions to cap, which was double of what I sold in my previous brokerage. Yeah. You, and in another video that you and I did when actually, when you were here at my house, you said uh, that the in the last brokerage, what you made in 11 months, you made that in two months after you made the switch. That's like incredible. That like gave me goosebumps. And That's I have- wild. Oh, wait, there's more. <laughs> oh. I, <and> then, <laughs> I'm pulling it up here. Within the last six months, your GCI has been over $80,000. So that is, yeah, dude. Like <laughs> you went from like- Peanuts. I remember having that conversation with you of, of at what point, just like breaking it down math, like at what point should you leave? And we found out that you were like essentially losing money, like with the math, with the splits that you had. Um, so I, I'm so fortunate like to have you on the team. Uh, dude, I I'm just so happy to like know you and I'm glad that we're friends. Same. Same. Cause I remember uh, that time, like you said, when I went to your house and we did the math and at that time, it was like that meme where like triangles and are flying all over the place and you're like trying to make the math make sense. And I was like, whatever, yeah. Allie, like this seems like a lie, like because I was blinded, like I thought it was impossible. And as soon as like I switched over, like it just went left for question and i know we're derailing from our normal framework but like okay so you made this you made the shift and it was almost immediate that you started seeing success that you weren't seeing previously and so like what do you attribute that towards honestly i think it was just uh the expectation that was set from the beginning like when i met with ruben and ali um i i just knew that there was a higher expectation that had to be met or set in order for me to like do the switch. But it wasn't like you have to be an elite agent to be on the team kind of thing. It was more of like, okay, like they're not around. This is like real life stuff. And if you can't do that, then like, what are you doing for your own life kind of thing? So I'm like, okay, like I just felt it in me that I had to literally step it up. And unfortunately, sometimes it does take that. It does take that moment of realization for you to be like, you know what, like, what the hell am I doing? Right. So I think there from that first conversation I had, I was like, okay, like, this is it. Like it's all gas, no breaks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I remember we would like meet each other at some of our, uh, like listings or whatever clients that, that we had. And we had so many at, at the same time we were like, we couldn't even, <laughs> We couldn't even handle it, but we did like, you know, so it was, I don't know. It's, it's been fun riding this crazy real estate wave with you. Yeah, dude. Totally agree. So we, we have derailed and we haven't even gotten to your moment. Let's talk about the show moment. Tell us a story. All right. So it's literally a 
macho moment. Um, only one other person knows this. Um, and I, oh, I love that start. I'm so excited. <laughs> I to hear it, but I have to. So I was a couple of months ago, I was hosting an open house and I won't say which property it was, I was just hosting an open house and I had Chipotle before the open house. Me and Chipotle aren't really friends anymore, so I don't really go there anymore. Um, it's that queso, dude. Dude, it's the spicy meat, the sour cream, all of it. So anyway, so I had a burrito before the open house, busy morning to get to the open house. And it there was literally people lined up at the open house to go in. And I was like, holy oh, smokes, yeah. like this is going to be a busy open house. My stomach started hurting. And like, Ali, I've told you this before, I have a weak stomach. So I, yeah, we've spoken about it, <laughs> but I'm at the open house <laughs> and people are just looking at it. Finally, like a group of people finally leave. So I'm like, okay, great. Like I could probably go to the bathroom pretty soon here. And then some people went out to the backyard and I literally did that second look like, okay, it looks like you're going to be out there for like two minutes. So I run to the master bathroom and I noticed that there was a camera in the living room. So like they had to have known the owners that I went to their bathroom. I literally did a courtesy flush like five times. And I like, it was like <laughs> in two seconds, it was all out. And I was like sweating because of how like embarrassed I was and how much my stomach hurt. And finally I, I went out and I was like, hopefully it doesn't smell in here. Like, I'm so sorry. I was so embarrassed. I went back out and they, they are just walking back inside from like the backyard so I'm just like oh like any questions for me and they come in they're like no like we're good and they go luckily they go over to the other bedrooms and then they leave Thank I was God. like oh my oh, God. God like I was so Dude. embarrassed and then I told my girlfriend about it she's like you're ridiculous you couldn't hold it I was like no I couldn't hold it like my stomach Dude, sometimes you can't <laughs> I feel you. So, I do feel you on yeah. that. That's my. <laughs> but at least you were able to flush it. Yeah. You know, like I was expecting that you wouldn't be able to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I was expecting them to go right in there and be like, who <laughs> blew this <laughs> up? And then just like, look at you. <laughs> and then the owners were there. Like, as soon as I finished up the open house, like they were on their way home. And I was like, well, they're going to be able to find out who went to the bathroom. And I was really embarrassed. But that is my show moment super embarrassed now everybody knows and the world knows once they watch this yeah. yeah now you have it on your checklist before open houses no chipotle <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> uh, nice. okay so i, I kind of got a feel for like the before real estate and um your other brokerage and switching over and the success that you've seen so and i know that you attribute a lot of success to you know the conversations you had with ali and ruben which is what else would you say was a contributing factor in the absolute, like the takeoff that you experienced? Uh, another thing too, is that most people probably don't know, but back in May, so my girlfriend was in school to be a respiratory therapist. It was going to be a two year course or like 18 months or something to be exact. And so she was in, she was working full time and it, there came a point where she was going to have to quit her job, her full-time job, which she made more money than me. Um, and so she was going to quit and go to school full time. And I felt, I, I naturally felt like I needed to pull the weight for the both of us. I'm like, just, I have to stick it up for 12 months. Like we'll be fine. Um, but it was in the middle of making the switch to the five pillars where that's where the fear kicked in. And I was like, holy smokes, if I don't pull my weight, for just a few months until she finishes school, like I ultimately have failed her and us because if I don't pay the bills, we're, we'll probably foreclose on our house, uh, not pay, you know, the bills, uh, et cetera. So, uh, that was really like my fuel. And I remember one day, like we're having this conversation and she's like, are you going to be able to do it? And I'm like, are you doubting me? Because I know what I'm capable of. But even though at that time it felt impossible that's really kind of what fueled me. And I was in up to this day, I have been able to do what I said. Yeah, man. Yeah. When your back is against the wall, you will do what totally. it takes, yeah. you know, like Absolutely. If people that are afraid of cold calling or even direct mail or video, they, their back isn't against the wall. That's it. Like that's, that's all it is. They're comfortable. Yep. So let's talk about what, um, so that was, we heard about you becoming a realtor let's talk about your business now. Like what, uh, what does life look like now for you as a realtor? Life is great. 
<laughs> it's nice. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so my life now, uh, since I've switched to five pillars, have been, has been a complete change from what it was before. Um, like I mentioned I, with my previous brokerage, uh, things were very different and I was salary. So things were, uh, the expectation was a lot different than it is now, uh, as well as for myself, like my own personal goals and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, switching over, uh, I had to, you know, create systems and like also take on the systems that, that, uh, Ali has set for us to help, you know, basically set us up for success. So, um, I am rambling. Holy no, dude. No, you're, you're not. Totally at fine. All. We asked the question, yeah. you're answering. We want it. more. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. So that makes sense. I'm curious about like the activities that you're doing. So, like, I understand the fuel, you know, what fueled you, but like, what are the actual activities that you're doing to generate the business and the closing that you've, that you've seen? We love your DMs on Instagram, and as long as you don't sound like a bot or aren't sharing your overnight crypto success, hit us up on Instagram. Must be friends. We're at the Shelby Show and at Allie the Agent. So, but what was the initial question? I'm so sorry. I'll like go quick. N- like, like, what are you actually doing? Okay, sorry. Like, what's what do you do as an agent? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, so since I switched, uh, the activities are a lot different. I used to make about 50 calls a day. Um, and that has totally different now. So I don't have a thousand people in my database to make that many calls. Uh, of course I have built up my database to make the calls, but now, uh, when, like I said, when I switched out, I was like, dude, you need to get on camera and like start doing videos. And I was so against that. Like I lo- low key was like, okay, Allie, like whatever videos. Yeah. <laughs> and on, like, I was annoyed because it was uncomfortable to me. And I knew that if it made me uncomfortable, that she had obviously had a valid point. She was doing the videos. So I literally just started watching videos and doing the videos. And that's what I'm doing now. So I've literally had people from high school reaching out. I've had referrals. Um, I've posted videos and uh, properties. I've boosted them on Facebook. And that's literally how I've gotten leads and that's, and referrals. So that is what has helped me in my business so far so much. Okay. And what are your, so you're doing videos on Instagram and Facebook, yes, is that correct? Mainly, in, mainly Instagram and they'll feed into Facebook. Okay. Gotcha. What is, uh, what kind of content are you doing? Just ever. For- what are you say, sharing in your videos? Just informational stuff. Like people that first, uh, videos that first time home buyers, uh, informative first time home buyer videos, um, or just things about the process of buying a home, uh, what's going on in the current market, like, uh, pretty much just things that buyers don't know, or maybe they do know, and they just need that refresher. Um, that's pretty much what's been helping me a lot. Yeah. I remember having that actually it was like more than one conversation about videos. And I remember you being nervous and I remember like your first couple of videos, it was like kind of obvious that you were nervous, but I was so proud of you. I was like, yes, like she's putting out videos. Oh yeah. And now the videos, like I literally look forward to your, um, I forget what you call it, like the, the motivation Monday because they're good and they speak to my soul. So now I'm like grateful that you are putting out videos because I am like the first person to watch them and the first person to comment. So I, I love that. Like, even, even though and we've had some like conversations too, that you didn't agree with, I didn't agree with. And like, we're just like working together through it. And I love it. And I, and sometimes, I don't know, this, this whole journey of, of sponsoring in like agents that are feeling stuck at their brokerage or like, you know, not being able to move forward. I hold the, the agents that I sponsor into like, I think maybe like too high of a standard or just like super high standard. Because if I'm going to like devote my time to help you, then do it. <laughs> you know, that that's it. So I'm just like, no, do it this way. Uh, like, because it works. And I'm so glad that like you've been taking advantage of it. And and I I don't know, I just really love working with you and seeing your progress with because you're, you're killing it in those videos. You are killing Thanks, it. Thanks, dude. And that's another thing too, is like, I, I am stubborn and uh, knowing that, these like certain things that you have in place for us to accomplish our goals is legit. Like you're not just telling us to do something just to do it, like just because you did it or whatever. And I appreciate that so much because it has helped me so much to help me achieve those goals. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like every time that there is any sort of feedback, I'm like, Hey, let's, let's do this. And I, I will check back in, you know, like for accountability, me and Ruben are there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so let's talk about, um, or Shelby, unless you had any questions before the deep dive. No, I'm okay. Let's deep dive. Let's yeah. Let's, let's deep dive. What <laughs> piece of like the realtor life puzzle do you feel like you have most unlocked that you can speak, you know, the most about? Tell us about that. So I love working with first time home buyers. That's probably my most favorite thing to do or my favorite thing to do as an agent because most time first time home buyers have no idea what the hell they're doing. And I love to be the solution or help find a solution uh, to help them purchase a, their, their first home. And a lot of people aren't uh, homeowners and I love to be able to, I'm rambling. So I'm so sorry. Oh no. Like you're, you like to mama bear them. It sounds yes. like you're like, that is, oh my God, it's so funny. We're completely different people, but I love that <laughs> there's people like you who exist out there who like have, you know, want to take the, the nurturing and the kind let's guide you through the whole, you know, like I freaking that's, that's great. Yeah, I do. I'm let's sure they through, love it too. Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> let's walk through, let's walk through the process of you working with a first time home buyer. Cause first time home buyers are a different beast. Like every category is a different yeah. beast. Uh, and first time home buyers, they're pros and cons. I think one mean they need a lot more handholding, but also two, it's their first experience with a realtor. So you can mold them into the best client that works for you. So, so true. I want to, yeah, I want to hear like what works for you from the moment that they reach out to you. What do you do? So let's just say I get a referral or I meet somebody for the first time and they're wanting to purchase a home. Uh, the first thing I do is I build report with them. I want to know like, what is their end goal? Why is it that they're purchasing purchasing a home, who is it that they're purchasing with? Um, and depending on the source, like whether maybe uh, somebody sent me a referral or or I got them myself, I want to have a uh, meeting with them immediately to make sure that I can find out like all their needs, uh, make sure that they're even pre-qualified before we jump into the whole process. Because I learned the hard way, or not really the hard way, I've learned uh, with my pillars now, that you have to really set boundaries and like lay down the law. Like my time is precious and I'm not going to waste my time if you don't have a prequel because I've had people who want to look at homes that's like half a million dollars and they don't even have a prequel. I'm like, how do you even know that you could purchase the home? And they're like, oh, well, I can afford Real it. Bad. Like I, I already paid $2,500 in rent. I'm like that means nothing, right? So I want to know everything. And then once I start, start building report, if they already don't have a lender, uh, then I'll help set them up with one if, if they don't have one. Um, and then I also like them to choose, like, let's, let's shop around. You don't have to just use that one lender that I recommended, uh, cause it might not be the right fit for you. So I'll, I'll hook them up with the lender and then they'll get pre-called. And then from there, I just do my buyer emails that I've, uh, gotten help with from Allie. And maybe five pillars, not sure, but I, I start the buyer email. So it's like literally a process. Um, and then we start looking at homes and get quick pause, quick pause in the, in the beginning, when they first reach out to you, uh, and then you set up a meeting, is that meeting in person over the phone, zoom, what do you do? So Ooh, typically question. I like to meet with them in person, but if I can't, I will meet with them via zoom at least so, or as long as we're face to face. Cause I want to meet them. I want them to know who I am. And I don't want them to just be on the phone all the time and then them not even know like who the hell they're working with. So if it's not in person, it's over Zoom. Uh, if not, we'll do a call. And then once uh, once we do that, then we'll get the ball rolling from there. Talk to the lender, look at homes, get them under contract, close. So it's, it's very, uh, it, it's a lengthy process. Uh, of course, there's a lot of little things that go in between. Maybe they're not in the position to buy it and have to wait. Uh, and I have to nurture them and that's okay. Like, I love doing that. I love checking in on people like, Hey, what's up? How you doing? How can I help? Like, I always want to know how can I help? Gotcha. And so what, um, you mentioned the emails, the Ali's emails, those templates, which is awesome. Do they, are you using like Trello? Or are you using KV core? What systems, um, are you using to plug into to track your people? So I guess you're serious. I've learned, uh, or I started using Trello. Before I never used Trello, I had a CRM that had all of that there for me. 
And so now I use Trello and in there, it'll just guide you step by step. So from the beginning, from the moment you get in contact with the buyer, uh, it'll tell you they're like, Hey, what do you have to do next? Um, so if, if once I meet with them in Trello, it'll tell you like, Hey, send out buyer email number one, you send that out and it gives you, it gives them such a uh, lengthy information in each email that like, if we're not able to meet in person, all of that information is in each email to help guide them throughout the whole entire transaction. So thank you, Ali, so much for creating these uh, buyer emails because I was used to doing all of this stuff in person and it eliminates so much time. And that's another thing. Like if you have a video in there explaining everything uh, that a buyer needs to do know throughout the process for each stage of the process, it eliminates so many questions off the bat. Or like, whereas if I didn't have these videos, when I'm going through, when I was going throughout the process, I would have to explain everything and it would, I would probably explain it multiple times. And if these buyers didn't take notes, then like, that's on them. Right. And then they come back to me like, well, you said this. It's like, no, it's now it's like, well, it's in the email. So you could see it there. Yeah. Yeah. And not just in the email, you also have videos in your email too. So they can just refer back to video number two, video number three, whatever it is, what, what kind of like, um, popular or most common first time home buyer questions do you have that are resolved by any, you know, these videos that you've created? So one of the biggest one, uh, or I think the biggest, one of the biggest misconceptions for buyers is how much do I have to pay you as an agent for you to help me purchase a home? And the the fact is, is in Arizona, you don't have to pay an agent to purchase a home. The seller pays for it. So that's the biggest thing. Because people think like, oh, I'm going to use a realtor. I have to pay them thousands of dollars for me to to get that education or get the help in order to purchase a home. So that's one of the the, the best answers that I love to give. It's like, hey, well, the best thing is yeah, you pay nothing in order for me to help you purchase a home. And then people say, people ask, uh, do I have to put 20% down in order to purchase a home? It's like, no, actually, uh, you could put from zero to five to 10 to 20% down on a home. And in so a lot of cases, people uh, do want to use like down payment assistance or, or they have the money to pay for their down payment. So that those are like the two most common uh, questions that I get. And then some people think that it takes a long time to purchase a home. And yes, it can take 30, 45 days, but some people think it takes months. It's like, no, it's actually pretty quick. <laughs> pretty quick. And okay, to loop it back real quick. I, so so you just dropped it in there, how you have videos within your email templates, which I think is so cool. I think it's cool that you're doing Zoom if you can't meet in person because most people default to phone and that you're including video within your emails. And it just seems like you're, it's just like every extra chance you can, you're getting in front of them with your face, which instills that extra layer of trust. And once you have that trust, everything else in business becomes so easy. So curious about how long it took you to set up, like how long did it take you to record those videos and embed them into your, to your emails? So it took me a whole day to do like five videos or six videos. I'm sorry. Uh, it took me all day. And that's because I am very picky and I keep watching the video and watching it. One time Ali was like, dude, you need to just get over it and like, just shoot the damn video like who cares if you mess up because they're going to see like the raw truth that you of you explaining the process to them. Like nobody freaking cares. And it, it's so true. Like yesterday yeah. I was editing a video. It was supposed to be a quick video and I was like showing my family and then they're like, and I'm like, are you catching what's in the video where I messed up? And they're like, no. And my brother's like, get the hell over yourself. So it's like, it's just that, oh my God. you know, that's like, cycle. that was my next question. Actually. It's like, are you, um, so for those, videos are you editing them yourself it sounds like. yes most of them some for the list for some listing videos i i have somebody who does them for me but if it's like a quick uh instagram video it, it it's pretty quick i've gone the hang of it like at first it used to take me like an hour um but now i'll just shoot the video quick because again ali get the hell out of your head so i just shoot the damn video and then i just put it into a, an app and it takes me a couple minutes and then i just post it Ooh, it's app? called InShot, which is really awesome and it's free so for those of you who need a quick oh. editing tool, InShot is like the best. I'm going to look that up. So does it let you like trim yeah. and move around clips and set music and do the whole... You could add them, split them, yes. animate it, like do the whole thing. It it brings out like the creativity in me, which I don't have at all. 
there, that's helpful. I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna look that up afterwards. Yeah. So thank yeah, you. Me too. Especially if it's free. Damn, we cheap. We're cheap. We, we? Get, we're so fucking <laughs> cheap. I love it. Literally, this is like another one of my Goodwill talks. Mm. Hey, yeah. we love Goodwill. Excellent. <laughs> Dude, I really yeah. do. <laughs> Okay, Karina, what else do you like attribute to your success, especially working with first time home buyers? Uh, how can I dive deeper into that? Um, can you reframe the question? Like, other than me, no. <laughs> other than uh, what was the first thing you said? Other than. Or, or I guess what other, what other portion of the first time home buyer transaction are, do you feel like you have on lock? So you have, you scoop them in, you nurture them, they feel comfortable working with you. And then like throughout the way, sometimes there are ups and downs during transactions. How do you keep them loving you until the very end of the transaction. So, yo, real quick, this podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who'd benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. Tag us, we'll reshare that. The very end of the transaction. So one thing that I am not is confrontational. So it is very hard for me to be confrontational with clients, even if they're like walking all over me. Unfortunately, like I don't know how to be like the mean person or be like, you know what, like you are crossing the line. Uh, I really try to just like quickly deescalate things when things start to go left. And I think that that is like, I, I would consider it a skill because whenever you're dealing with tough clients in tough situation, whether it be a buyer or a seller, like things could go left really fast. And I think like deescalating a situation uh, is very important because you can literally lose clients from that. And I think that like me being a people person has really helped uh, me being an agent because that's literally what being an agent is. Is like, you just have to create a relationship throughout the whole entire transaction. And like, if you can't even talk to people, like what do you even do? You might as well be a TC. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That sounded really <laughs> up. I should, you take that part out. No, take that part out. No, dude, <laughs> we can say anything. This is a, this is a safe space where we say yeah. all the time. Well, so, we, all the time. The only fine. I say that is because <laughs> TCs, like they're on the computer most of the time. And that's where I lack organization is by being a TC. So like, I just like being out there. I like being the face. I like being able to help the person literally handhold them throughout the whole entire process to get them to that end goal. With working with first time home buyers, well, I guess not just specific to first time home buyers, any clients can take up a lot of your time and you are so good. Probably one of the best that I know at time management <laughs> and turning your phone off. You have a set part, like time that you are like, okay, you know what? No more clients, unless it's, you know, some sort of emergency. I put emergency in quotes in case you're not watching this. Um, can you speak more about that? How did you start that so early on into your realtor business? And how did you keep that going up until now? Um, honestly, like straight up, my girlfriend was like, get off your phone. And I'm like, okay, yes, ma'am. Oh, so she wears the pants. Got it. It's no, her. she does not. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she was just like, you know what? Like, you know, you don't have to be doing something at 9 p.m. at night. And I'm like, well, you don't know that because sometimes you do have to send out an offer. This was like at the peak of COVID, right? People were like, send my offer. I want to get my offer accepted. Uh, and really the way I like started to train my brain or flip the switch, I was like, you know what? If the bank isn't open, if it's open from eight to five or whatever the time is, that's pretty much when the like most important things happen. So if I can write an offer the next day at 7.30 a.m. and send it out before noon, like we're going to be fine as long as I give the agent a heads up like, hey, you should be expecting an offer in your email by tomorrow. So that's kind of how I learned how to set the boundary because I'm like, you know what, if this is going to affect my relationship that is going to start to affect a lot of other things in my life. And so I just said, you know what, like 7.30, that's it. By that time, it's dinner time. Like there is just no reason uh, to be on my phone. So I, I just had to do it like immediately. And it was just a hard stop there. And people respect it. Nice. Now. Yeah. Totally. Totally. All that, that is expectations. expectations. 
Yeah. I love that. Um, and, and what is it that you say to them and how do you say it in what form? So if let's just say if the client, um, well, now that I put my phone on do not disturb, uh, like the other day I had somebody call me at like 8 PM and the next morning when I called them at like 8 AM, I was like, Hey, I'm so sorry. And I, I didn't even realize that uh, I had a call from you. And she's like, I'm so sorry. Like I, I realized that your phone went straight to voicemail. I figure you also need time for yourself. That was the first thing she said. And I said, oh, wow. She sounds nice. I said, thank you. Yeah. They're not all. Like, <laughs> yeah, for real. I said, thank you so much for understanding. Like, I'm so sorry. What, what can I help with? And from there, she's just like, oh, you know, whatever she didn't help with. But um, I've actually never had somebody be like, well, you didn't answer my call. Uh, I, I've never had somebody say that. And I think it's because it's, I don't know, it's all the way into say it, the way you say things. And if you just set the expectation and that boundary from the beginning, they're like, okay, like, yeah, I, I get it. You're, you're also a human. You're not just the realtor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you have a hard set time that you put your phone on, do not disturb. What does your morning look like? I love my mornings. So I know uh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> since getting into real estate, I've, I've always uh, been a morning person person for the most part. Um, but since I got into real estate, I love it. Like I wake up and I look forward to my mornings. Cause like when I get towards the end of my day and it's already eight 30, I'm like, Oh, I can't wait for tomorrow morning. Even though I have no idea what it's going to look like. It's not super weird, but <laughs> no, I love I look that. Forward to it. I'm like, I literally lay my head to rest and I go to sleep happy knowing that I'm going to wake up, have some coffee, go outside, get some fresh air and, or go for a walk or run or whatever. Um, and, and then I have my coffee and then before I was coming just straight to my laptop and like looking at all my emails and stuff like that. And I literally felt like my brain was full, like my inbox was full and I just needed to like delete a million emails. And so I, I finally just started uh, going outside. That's the first thing I do now. Uh, and then I start, I start my morning with breakfast. I love breakfast. Like that's my favorite meal of the day. So I'll have breakfast and then start. I'm... What? So what time do you wake up? About five, five thirty. And you go outside right away. Is it dark? Uh, now it is not. Okay, now it's not. Okay, so you go outside and you breathe in the fresh air in the morning, and then you go back in and you make coffee. No, I sit. I sit outside right? with my coffee. So I gotta sit outside and sip oh. on my hot. I like hot coffee. In the summer, I sometimes like iced coffee, but mainly a hot hot coffee person. And what are you thinking about during this time? Like, are you like rounding yourself with nature or are you like thinking about reflecting on your life or like, what is yeah. that? Yeah. Like? Most of the time I go outside and I'm alone. Cause like, I just need like nobody come outside. Like I just need to think about my life and yeah, I literally just soak it in. I'm like, damn, life is so freaking good, man. Like let's, mm, let's gratitude. get it. And yeah, I just, I just focus on how far I've come within the last six months since I've, I've switched yeah. and it makes you feel so different. Right. And you know, what's crazy is like people say money isn't everything and you're absolutely, it's true. Like it's not everything, but to a certain extent, like it is because there's so much you can do with your life to help fuel those goals. And like, honestly, like being broke is no fun. Right. So now that my life has changed so much, Sorry. I'm like, man, I look forward to so many things and it's like, it's just helped my life so much to be able to do the things that I love with the people that I love on my terms, like just the whole damn thing. So I literally just reflect like how far I, it's, oh, I love that so much that you just said. So like, I love the gratitude. I'm also obsessed with mornings by the way, but I love that you do the gratitude and the reflection. And I think one of the coolest thing that you said is like, when you're reflecting, you think about how far you've come, because I feel like so many people have this issue. Uh, it's this book I just got sent by um, another agent. She sent me this book. It's called The Gap and the Gain. Have you guys read it? I haven't. It? Mm. And, Is that Ryan Holiday? Um, I it's not. Um, I can't remember who wrote it, but in, and I haven't even finished the whole thing, but like the main concept is that achievers normally focus on the gap. So they think about wherever they are and they think about how far they have to go and how much they didn't achieve when looking ahead to that direction. But the, the happy achievers are the ones that think about the gain. So they think about where they, they are and they look back and they say, look at how far I've come. And it's 
you're in the same position, but your mentality about where you are in life is just completely flipped over in a positive manner. So that was really cool that you said that. Another uh, little nugget yeah. here is if you haven't read The Miracle Morning yet, you Go you got to read The Miracle Morning. <laughs> that book. Has- <laughs> That's Shelby's love language. Really? Yeah, you're you're literally speaking my language. Dude, I cannot tell you, like, I've been obsessed with that book since 2018, The Miracle Morning Millionaires one. And like, I fangirl over David Osborne and Hal Elrod, and I've met them like multiple times. So my fangirlism is down a little bit, but I still like think I love it. And I love them in the book. And you you are speaking my love. It's just amazing. I, I feel like once you read, you have to read that book once in your life. If you're not a morning person, like read the damn book. If you're a night person, read the damn book. It's gonna, you, I don't know, like you just feel like this fire that just comes in to your body and you just like want to do good. It's it's such a good book. Read it, people. Yeah, we will have a link to that in the show notes. Let's, let's transition to the golden nugget. Uh, this is a piece of content, script, calculator, whatever it is, uh, information that you're helping other agents out and it's free access that everyone can find on the agentgoldmine.com. What do you have for your golden nugget today? Real quick, if you're listening to this on Apple, Apple does not make it easy to leave us a rating. So I'm going to break this down for you. In the search tab, type in the Be More Show for Agents. Click on the thumbnail, then click that middle tab that says reviews and click write a review. Tap on those five stars, of course. Let us know how awesome this show is and how it's helped you. And if that's too much for you, I understand and just switch to Spotify already. Thank you so much. And back to the show. For those of you who don't know about Forewarn, it's an app for agents or like people in real estate uh, to look up names. Uh, You can look people up by their names, by their phone numbers. I don't believe it gives you the option to look them up by their address, but like, let's just say a client or a weirdo came into an open house and they put their name down and you feel some type of way, you can immediately look them up and you can find their like criminal history. You can find where they've lived in the last few years. You can also find out uh, what uh, what loans they have on their property. It's a really good tool to have, especially if uh, you need uh, phone numbers and you need like the tools when door knocking um, or just to feel safe. Like it's it just a lot of, pieces connect together to help you you could you could use that with others if you're single too true (laughs) oh my god (laughs) yeah wrote a little quick background check it's not free Allie. it's not free it's not free how much it's like 20 bucks a month yeah i gotcha but you love it and okay question so you look someone up you're looking up Allie, and you're like god whose house did i burn (laughs) down okay let's find out about her (laughs) Does it automatically, like, what do you do with that information? Do you take it and pull it to Trello or like, does it automatically feed somewhere? You could put it in a your CRM. Like for okay. example, if you need a, an address to send a, a thank you card or a birthday card or whatever. And let's just say that the client or the person, friend, whatever family never gave you their address and you, and you want to do like a kind gesture. You could also get their address there. And it's really easy to find people's addresses now. So it's not like they're going to be creeped out about the fact that you sent that over. (laughs) It's a really handy app. I recommend it. Hell yeah. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. I didn't know that. Me neither. What? Um, okay. So looking ahead to this next year, what is the next piece of the agent puzzle that you're going to implement into your business? What are you working on? So I've really been thinking about adding a showing agent to the, to my, my little team, my girl. I need yes, agent. yes. <laughs> so I've I realized this when I've gone out of town because I have been able to travel this year more than I ever have in my whole entire life. Thank goodness. And wow. so I uh, noticed that when I went out of town is when buyers want to go look at homes, which is always how it happened. Always, it's like how do you know? Yeah. I never even told you, and now you know that I'm going out on vacation. <laughs> And so I'm like, man, I really need an agent. And then the, uh, then I started thinking, well, you're, you know, you're not at the level to even have a showing agent, but then I've had conversations with people where they're like, just pay them, pay them to show the property. And I'm like, Hey, yeah, it's better to show the property than them miss out. And then, then come back, be upset that I wasn't able to show them a house. And then I lose them as a client completely. 
So I have somebody in mind to be a showing agent. And so that is definitely in the works, hopefully by the end of the year, if not early next year. Uh, I just need to take action. I need to make more money in order to make that happen. So that is my goal. Uh, more money, more problems, but I want to eliminate the problems. So I need to bring on a new agent. <laughs> and I also want to start that. growing my team. So I was kind of against it at the beginning because I'm like, you know what? I, I really want to be an agent for a while. I, I do. I love it. I love uh, being an agent. Like I said, I love helping buyers. So I can't see myself doing this for a few years, but I know there's going to be a time where I need to start building my team. And uh, that's like my long-term goal is to have some people on my team so that I can have uh, a little bit more time for myself and for my family. Nice. Yeah. The, the question of like, should I get a showing agent and, and thinking that you, I think what were the words you use? Like might not be ready essentially is another like limiting belief that people just have to come over because especially if you've never lived in Tucson, my goodness, people don't know that it takes one hour to get from one side of town to the other. Whoa. You know, like the, the amount of time that you can save by getting a showing agent and you can either pay them per property per day or a percentage of once they come, once they get under contract, you know, like it's, there's so many different ways to work that out. So it's, so it's a win-win for you and them. Right. So I love that. And, and actually there will be a, a showing agent, uh, joining our group in probably like six months, but don't wait for them. Okay. Do not wait for them. <laughs> Get someone else. Yeah. I have someone in mind. Yeah. Good. Cool. We'll talk Perfect. offline. I'm curious. Cool. cool. Okay. So that makes sense in like the next like 12 months in business. And you mentioned down the road, like you love being an agent, which is awesome, but you're looking to build out your team. So is that what, if we were to fast forward, you know, five, 10, 15 years into the future, is, is that what that looks like for you? Or what is the, what is the, the end state? Like? So my end goal is to uh, build up my portfolio. Cause I feel like I'm uh, not trying to compare myself to other people, but compared to the team that I'm on, Y'all have so many doors. I'm like, I need a second one. I only have one. So that is the long-term goal. Uh, we are looking to purchase our second uh, property by the end of the year, if not early next year. I think it's going to be early next year. Um, I really want to build up my uh, rental portfolio. So I uh, never thought I would be in the position to do that. And now that uh, I have been an agent for almost two years, I can totally see myself doing that and being a landlord. Uh, and so I'm super excited to to build up my portfolio and have some properties under my belt uh, for passive income so that I don't have to work until I'm 60. I do yeah. love that because that's um, there's so many of us in the community who are, you know, we're investors first. And it was just such an equal uh, focus. The agent was one piece of the business, but also building wealth and, you know, acquiring assets was another piece. So you are in the right place <laughs> to learn and be pushed in a whole different side of the business. So I'm excited to hear that. I'm excited. You. Yeah. And, and that's another thing that kind of uh, drove me towards uh, Five Pillars uh, because you guys are, you know, focused on being investors first. And I love that because I'm like, I need to be in a, a, in a circle where I'm involved with people who are already doing the damn thing so that I can do it too. And so that, that really uh, got me excited. And I know that I'm in the right spot right now to help me achieve those long-term goals. Cause I'm trying to bake, break ger generational curses. Like I'm trying to change what I already know. Like I don't want to work until I'm old and then retire and then what? Totally. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Karina, do you have any parting words or wisdom before we head into our wrap up questions? Uh, I think that if you're scared as to do something, just do it. I was once scared in September, October last year. I was scared. Like, honestly, I was so scared that I woke up with a stomach ache every single day. And I'm like, I think I have irritable bowel syndrome, but it's like, no, it's like, that's when the fear start, starts kicking in. And that's when you need to start moving the ticker before you go down the rabbit hole. And so if you do something and it sounds scary, that is when you need to do it. 
yeah, excited it feels. Yeah. I love that too. Action. Yeah. It's like yeah. that feeling of, oh God, I'm terrified of it is like actually the the red flag of like, go, do it right now. So okay. Um, so I have one of the first wrap up questions. So what is your favorite app or tool other than the fact I mean you've already given us two with the editing app as well as the the let's stalk people on the internet. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that app. So do you have another one out there for us? I right now, not other than Forewarn. Oh, InShot, but I already said that one. So InShot, Forewarn. That works. What's a third? Dude, you, you did it. You did. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ali's pushing. See, she's doing I'm it again. Pushing. She's like another one. I don't have another one right now. <laughs> it could be okay. simple too. Okay. No problem. Sorry, Instagram? Uh, <laughs> no. Dude, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's mine. Well, actually, mine was Google Calendar, but number two is Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Google Calendar is a must. And then, yeah, Instagram, it just helps you uh, so much in your business and just get out of your head. Just use use the gram. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. What events are you going to this year? Where can people find you in person? So this year, I'm going to two events. Uh, it's the most events I've, I'm going to ever. Uh Quick story, in my previous brokerage, I had set the goal to go to one event, at least one event in the year, and I never did it. And now I am going to go to two events this year. So the first one is going to be the Tom nice. Ferry. Um, so I'll see you there, Allie. And then I am also yeah. to the Five Pillars Retreat, which I'm super excited for. And I cannot believe I got in last minute. So girl, we, you know, I went... <laughs> it's funny you messaged me and you're like yo are there still spots available and I was like yeah there's one left dude I go back there's like actually no more like beds but that's fine we are gonna work I'm it like, out we are gonna get an air mattress <laughs> so and yeah you got the very last one that doesn't even exist and we're stoked for you damn I feel good and yeah. you know it's crazy too. dude we're making it work I saw the I saw hmm. the uh the ad I'm sorry not the ad. I saw the uh the email that you sent where it says it, there was mm -hmm. a, a quote and it said, if there is not a, a chair in the room, like make one or something like that. If there's not a seat at the table. Yeah. And that's literally yeah. what I did. You, you literally so did I'm, that. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, cool. So how can Allie and I help you in your business this upcoming year? What Send all the referrals. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, <laughs> she's not getting. She's not getting. <laughs> other than Tucson, that, Arizona, down in the dirty tea, baby. Uh, other than referrals, uh, just holding me accountable. Like I, I'm, I'm human, and I fall off the tracks, and sometimes I just need to be like put back on the track to help me achieve that goal. And I don't know, just checking in on me to to help me out, uh, make sure that I'm I'm saying what I. What I said I would do in putting my money where my mouth is. Nice. Nice. I like that. And last question, where can people find you? Where can people reach out to you and talk to you, especially if they're like perhaps a realtor feeling stuck and in the same position you were at? Uh, you could reach me on Instagram, Karina Tucson Realtor, or you can find me on Facebook, Karina Velais, or you can find me on Google. You could just search my name and you will see my Give it a go there. I love it. Hell yeah. There's this time where I, I tried to make give it a goog a thing, like for Google. Uh, we're going to bring that back now. So, okay, give Karina a goog. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to uh, make fetch it, happen, Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. And so while you're on the gram finding Karina and hanging out with her, know that you can find Allie at Allie the Agent or me at The Shelby Show on the gram. And uh, Karina, is there anything else that we haven't covered that you would like to tell us or listeners? I don't have anything right now. Thank you guys so much. Okay. Thank you guys for, uh, I feel a privilege to be on this team. Like I, I really do. Cause there's some, some really awesome people on this team that are doing the things that I want to do. So I'm just super happy to be around a group um, that loves to talk to each other, but holds each other to that high standard. And it's not like, one of those competitions where you're like, oh, like I'm trying to sell more houses than you. It's more of like, hey, like do the damn thing, you know, do do what you said you would do. And so I'm just I'm just so like happy to be around a group like that. We're we're literally lifting each other up and not on each other. <laughs> yeah, just 
in just shitting in open houses. houses. Right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> dude Allie we were there all right well (laughs) we're there we're like twins today (laughs) so yeah that's it for today Shelby everyone you know what to do be a bro and share the show peace thanks for listening dude if you want the golden nugget that this guest provided see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com that's where we keep the resources for you till next time